Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat here. I'm today talking about Toonami's ratings from this past Saturday, April 6, 2024. Now let's start at the top of the block. At the top of the block, we have Ninja Kamui at a 0.11, then we have Zom 100 at 0.09, then we have Lycris Recoil at a 0.08, then we have One Piece at a 0.07. Then we have Nardo Shippuden at a point zero nine, and we do not have the number for Dragon Ball Z Kai or the uh, sub of Ninja Kamui. This is a pretty exciting week for ratings. One, generally it was a pretty good week, and two, this is maybe the first week in a while that didn't fall that very boring pattern of the lead show gets a number, and then the show behind that's like a ten, a hundredth or two lower. And then the shows after that might be a hundredth or two lower. Those are so boring to talk about because there's nothing to talk about. There's a lot to unpack with this week. First, let's start with Ninja Kamui, which has been a very pleasant surprise. As you very well know if you've been watching my videos, I did not like the premiere episode of Ninja Kamui, and I never really returned to it. But apparently a lot of people do end up liking it, and it's been doing fairly well in ratings. Not as well as Warner Brothers Discovery has been saying, I'll more on that in a moment. But it has been a pleasant surprise in terms of viewership. Now, the next show after that, Zom 100, holding serve at a point zero nine. It's in a nice little nice middle ground. Show hasn't generated much talk outside of the typical, like, Tanami sphere of things. But it's a show that, from what I have seen, has been pretty decent. I, I like it. And then after that, we have Lycris Recoil. I was wrong last week. Last week, I stated that that episode was the penultimate episode. This past Saturday actually was a penultimate episode, episode 12 out of 13. Next week is going to be the season, the finale of Lycris Recoil, and that means stay tuned. Probably sometime in the next few days, possibly today, we'll probably get some announcement about a replacement for Lycris Recoil, so that's something to keep your eyes peeled for. And again... Honestly, I've been a little disappointed in Lycris Recoil's ratings the whole time, too. Like I've been saying this, and this is probably the fifth time I've said this, if I had to, like, plan out my best and worst of 2024 li list already, I would have to put Ninja Kamui probably on the best list, and I might end up having to put Lycris Recoil on the worst of list based on ratings performances alone. And that's just baffling. Like I said, it's just been baffling to me that Lycris Recoil has not really generated much of a viewership on Tanami. Like, Zom 100 came out roughly around the same time, but I think Zom 100 was a little, little newer. And it's been actually doing better than Lycris Recoil has. And this is even including times when Lycris Recoil was the second show on the block behind Ninja Kamui. So, I don't know. And then afterwards, after that, we had, a. Uh, you had One Piece pull in a .07. Normally, if you don't look at the other numbers, that's an alright number. It's a pretty decent number. But what really dwarfs that was the absolutely amazing night Naruto Shippuden had. Naruto Shippuden not only built on One Piece, not only built on Lycris Recoil, but it also built on Zom 100, finishing as the 45th ranked cable premiere of Saturday, this past Saturday night. And that, you have to kind of uh, put a grain of salt in that because they include a lot of like single hours of news as their own show, which I think dilutes the rankings quite a bit. And also, I guess it helps Tanami that the semifinal games of March Madness, the uh, final four games, ended a good hour, an hour and a half before. So that ended up not having any real impact on the ratings. Usually when those events tend to last long or, or long drawn out games, that tends to hurt ratings a bit, but it didn't happen this week. Again, because mo both of the semifinal games were pretty fast-paced in terms of completion. But outside of that, I mean, that's just the news for you guys. Ninja Kamui has actually been building a bit stronger over time. And now to go to Warner Brothers Discovery, Upfronts came out this week. And Warner Brothers Discovery really likes to toot their own horn about stuff. They had all these different listings for, like, why their shows are doing very well. And this is not just one Tsunami thing. We're talking, like, TLC, TNT, sh channels like that, too. They're talking about how amazing a year they had. And what stuck out to me, of course, as someone who covers Tsunami, is them saying that Ninja Kamui 
had a 21% increase in ratings over the year before. Naturally, Ninja Kamui didn't exist the year before, so I went back and did some digging in my own videos. And the show that was premiering at this point last year was My Hero Academia at the top of the block in Tanami. I compared week to week ratings. And coincidentally, outside of this past week, every single time Ninja Kamui either tied or had a slightly lower rating than My Hero Academia did. So, you do not have a 21% ratings increase. If you're being truthful, you could still say that Ninja Kamui had comparatively good numbers if you presume the fact with cable cutting that you should expect lower and lower cable ratings as time goes by. But again, that's something you can't market because you're admitting that your own industry sucks if you say that. So they have to do some voodoo math and come to a 21% increase in rating when realistically... I think I averaged them. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I averaged them, and it was an overall net loss of about 5%. Which, considering cable cutting, is not bad at all. You can argue that's pretty good. So it's not like Ninja Kamui's really been disappointing in ratings. It's just not built on My Hero Academia. And there are other stuff, too. And you could tell that Warner Bros. Discovery was absolutely full of shit when they start listing, like, they tried breaking people down into, like, super tiny categories. Like, I distinctly remember OWN, which is Oprah Winfrey Network. Was like, it had the highest ratings among African-American unmarried women for non-sport. It, like, it broke into, like, 20 different categories. And that's the thing. It's like, look, they're looking for any win they can get. So they're just going to list, oh, we won this very, very specific group that no one probably has ever talked about a rating since until right now. You know? But again, it's all business, and for these upfronts, you have to say, oh, we're doing amazing, we're doing great, look, 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 we're number one in this very specific category, we're number one in this specific category, and of course, when Ninja Kamui shows up, and is probably the first anime you've looked at and didn't immediately get a hard-on for a tax break, you decide, hey, let's say it's doing well. And by the way, before this conversation starts, it's gonna start in a few weeks when Ninja Kamui ends, I fully expect we will see a season two in Ninja Kamui. Like, I know the plot would probably end, but that doesn't stop Jason DeMarco. He tried, even though Fena Pirate Princess had a clear ending, he tried forcing the creator to make a second season, even though the creator said, hell no. And apparently, Shinmu, you could definitely create a second season for if that didn't right off, because that's that's a whole long plot line of the whole game series. And he only touched a portion of it. And that's the damn shame, because Shinmu really looked like something that could have been a long-term cash cow for Tanami. If I had to go back and look at, like, the Tanami originals that were written off and say, which one was the biggest disappointment, it's Shinmu purely because it had such a high ceiling. But I'm digressing at this point. Tanami overall, very good week in the ratings. What do you guys think? Leave your comments and pins down below. I'm Super Orange Cat, and that is all.